Suppose you start with the circle, and generate 20 random points on its circumference. Then, connect each point to a random, unconnected point, and count the number of intersections. The question is, on average, how many intersections do we expect? Feel free to pause the video and give the problem a try, and when you're ready, come back to see the solution. This video will have three parts. The probability of two chords intersecting, first method, the probability of two chords intersecting, second method, and the expected number of intersections. Part 1, the probability of two chords intersecting, first method. A good starting point is to consider a simpler case. We'll draw just four points instead of 20, resulting in two chords. If we move one of the points around, we can observe where it needs to be so that the chords will intersect. Let's label the endpoints of the first chord A and B and color them yellow. We'll do the same for points C and D and color them orange. If we leave CD where it is and move A and B around, you might notice that the chords will intersect if A and B are on opposite sides of CD. To formalize this, we'll let CD divide the circle into two arcs. For the chords to intersect, A needs to lie on the green arc and B needs to lie on the purple arc. So what's the probability that A lies on the green arc? Since each point on the circumference is equally likely, the probability is just the ratio of the green arc length to the circle's circumference. We'll call the green arc length S and the circumference will be 1. Then our probability simplifies to just be s. The length of the purple arc is 1 minus s, so the probability that point b lands on the purple arc will be 1 minus s. So the probability the chords intersect is the probability that a lies in green and b in purple, plus the probability that a lies in purple and b in green. This simplifies to 2s times 1 minus s. The problem is, this value will change depending on s, which can range from 0 to 1. So how do we account for this? We need the law of total probability. This rectangle will represent a sample space, or the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. The oval is an event, or a set of outcomes, and we'll call it A. B1, B2, and B3 are also events, and these ones partition our sample space, which means that every outcome will be in one of these three events. The oval is made of the sum of three pieces, and each piece is the intersection of A and one of the Bs. The ratio of the intersection to B1 is the conditional probability of A given that B1 occurs. And similarly for B2, and B3. If we rearrange the equation and substitute, we now have a formula for the probability of the intersection of two events. We can now express the probability of A as the sum of the three intersections, and then substitute our new formula. This works fine for a finite partition, like three events, but we have infinite possibilities for our arc length. This would be like trying to divide our sample space into infinitely many events. So what do we do? As is often the case, when a formula is in terms of a finite sum, it can be extended to the continuous by using an integral. Let's see how this could work. If we try to just replace the sum with an integral, we run into a problem. We integrate over the possible lengths of s, 0 to 1, but the probability of s having any particular length is actually 0, since it's chosen from a continuous interval. Let's see how to get around this. We'll put the green arc on the x-axis of a plane. If we put the probability of s equaling little s on the y-axis, the whole function would just be 0. So let's replace it with f of s. This function is called a probability density function. To see how this works, we'll draw an arbitrary function. Then, to find the probability of s landing between a and b, we'll take the area under the curve between those two values. This is equivalent to taking the integral of the density function from a to b. In our case, every arc length is equally likely, so our function will be constant. To find the height, we notice that the total area must be 1, since it's guaranteed we'll choose some arc length, and the width of this rectangle is 1, so the height must also be 1. This means f of s equals 1, so we can substitute that into our formula, and we end up with the integral from 0 to 1 of 2s times 1 minus s ds. This works out to be 1 third. Part 2, the probability of two chords intersecting, second method. 
Once again, we'll start with a circle and draw four random points on its circumference. We'll choose an arbitrary point and label it A. And by the setup of the problem, we know it's equally likely for A to connect to any of the other three points. First, we'll connect it to this top point, which we'll label B. This means that C and D must connect to each other. In this case, the chords don't intersect. The second possibility is that A connects to C, meaning B must connect to D. In this case, the chords do intersect. And finally, A could connect to D, meaning B connects to C. And here again, the chords don't intersect. If we look at the three results, each equally likely, only one results in an intersection. This means the probability of intersection is 1 in 3, which matches our earlier result. Part 3. The expected number of intersections. For this part, we will need indicator random variables. This sounds complicated, but really, it's just a function that indicates whether an event occurred. We'll use the notation i of a to mean the indicator of event a occurring. This function outputs two values. 1 if a occurs, and 0 otherwise. In our case, event a refers to a pair of chords intersecting. The next thing we need is to find the expected value of this random variable. Expected value is just a weighted sum of each possible outcome, weighted by its probability of occurring. For example, suppose we wanted to know the expected value of a dice roll. We sum up each outcome multiplied by its probability of occurring, and this works out to be 7 over 2. So the expected value of an indicator random variable is just 1 times the probability of its event, plus 0 times the probability of the event's complement, in other words, the event not occurring. This simplifies to just the probability of the event. So for each pair of chords, the expected number of intersections is the probability of intersection, which is one third. Now the total number of intersections will be the sum over all pairs of chords of the indicator of that pair intersecting. To find the average, we can apply expected value to both sides. And by a rule called the linearity of expectation, we can pull the expected value inside the sum. We know the expected value of each indicator is one-third, which means we're just summing up one-third, but over how many pairs of chords. To make a pair, there are 10 options for the first chord, and 9 options for the second chord, which multiplies to 90. But this actually overcounts the number of pairs, since swapping the order results in the same pair. So there are actually 45 pairs of chords. Just for fun, let's derive the formula for this by multiplying the top and bottom by 8 factorial. Which leaves us with 10 factorial over 2 factorial times 10 minus 2 factorial. This generalizes as the binomial coefficient, or the formula for n choose k. So we need to sum one-third from 1 to 45, which is just 45 times one-third, which equals 15. And that's the answer. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comment section. That's all for now, and I'll see you in the next one.